This is the DeLonghi La Specialista coffee machine. This machine has been out for a few years now, um, but there are many in the market now that are sort of in this range. And as a former barista and having worked in specialty coffee for many years, uh, I wanted to give a review of this and where it kind of sits in that range of domestic coffee machines without going to sort of the prosumer level or looking at machines like a La Marzocco, single group type of machine. Um, this one is uh, sort of fitted with a few kind of automations and I would say kind of guardrails to help uh, the average consumer who's interested in having that barista kind of experience, but um, to give you some sort of safety in how you brew and extract that. Um, the machine itself looks quite nice and sturdy and I would say even quite aesthetically pleasing, um, particularly in this color. Um, now this machine was given to me as a gift. Um, I'm not sponsored by DeLonghi, they have not reached out in, in any way in this sense, but um, I do want to give kind of an unbiased review, if you will, and a bit detailed into what the machine can do and, and what is really the, the features that are going to be the most useful for, I guess, the general consumer. Um, so starting off, I guess, with the look of the machine, um, it has a great look to it. It is a little bit taller. Um, this would probably compare most to the uh, Breville uh, Express, I believe it's called. Um, it's a little bit taller. It sits a bit sort of um, heavier in terms of having a lot of metal uh, sort of uh, as part of the body, which is really nice, actually. Uh, even the drip tray here, uh, the stainless steel features. Um, the trim here of this chrome is actually plastic, um, but you do have, you know, this nice uh, pressure gauge in the middle, which is uh, actually useful for dialing in, which we'll get to later on. Um, and even the temping uh, handle here is metal as well. Um, so a really nice look to it. Overall, it feels really sturdy, um, quite heavy to even kind of move around a little bit, which to me is a good sign. It means that, you know, it's quality parts, quality build to it. Um, in the back here, which is a little bit inconvenient, um, but you do have a two liter uh, water tank um, where you can pour in your filtered water, which is quite uh, great size, um, considering how they've kind of fit it into this build. Uh, and then a 250 gram uh, hopper for beans. Um, I personally just pour in a little bit at a time to just maintain freshness of the beans. Um, this is not necessarily vacuum sealed per se up top, um, there are a few beans in there that I'll just keep and then I'll top up when I'm ready to make coffee again. So, look, overall the build of this machine is, uh, is, is really great, really happy with that. Um, some of these buttons here are even metal as well with some plastic features. Um, but really nice kind of face on that and obviously the DeLonghi brand and the La Specialista uh, branding on the front as well. So the first thing I want to talk about with this machine is the grinder. Um, you can see here the lid comes off. It does have kind of a rubber seal around the side and you pour your beans in. Um, very sort of straightforward in terms of what a grinder does uh, as far as the mechanical side of things. Um, very limited range uh, of coarseness to fine. <laughs> uh, so a limited grinding range, which is probably not an issue for most people. Uh, you basically keep it on numbers one through six. Um, I pretty much just keep it on number one all of the time. Uh, and I do wish personally that you could kind of tune the uh, grinder in with a little bit more um, detail, depending on you know the type of roast you have or the type of beans you have. Um, but for most people, I think this sort of simplified setup will do the trick. Um, what is impressive about the grinder and the machine overall, it has a lot of sensors in it. Um, the sensors are in the grinder, there's actually two sensors. So one is for simply, you know, are there beans in the grinder? It will let you know with a little warning red light here if you need to refill, if you need to refill the beans. Um, and you also won't be able to really use some of the functions. It will ask you to, to put more beans in first. 
Um, and that's really sensitive actually. Um, even you know, just down to a few beans, it picks it up. I think it's an infrared sensor in there. The other one is uh, the sensor for uh, the actual uh, automatic sort of grinding here, um, which we will get into when we actually make some coffee. Um, but it will uh, sort of adjust the time, I believe, or the rotations per minute of the grinder itself um, for those grinds coming out. Um, that one is probably a little bit less useful for me personally and how I use the machine, um, but very useful if you want to sort of automate the process. Um, but overall, I would say the grinder has been consistent. Um, the actual grounds that come out of the um, uh, out of this sort of station here, the tamping and grinding station, um, has been quite consistent. No sort of uh, extra static or additional mess here, which is which is really great um, because some grinders, even really nice, expensive commercial grinders, will give you a lot of static and have uh, had issues with that uh, in previous sort of uh, coffee bar setups. Um, but for this machine, I'm quite happy with this. Um, look, it's not, if you're familiar with some of the brands, it's not, you know, a, a Melconig uh, EK43 type of grinder. So it's not something that's going to um, produce that kind of in, insane quality, professional quality. But it does give the consistency that you're looking for, which is probably the bigger issue, especially if you're just using this for your daily coffee. So let's talk about the steam wand on this machine. Um, the La Specialista is a single boiler machine, um, but it does have uh, some technology that is, is allowing for double heating elements um, for the uh, steam one particularly and for the extraction. Um, you can't do them at the same time, but it does allow for a really quick transition um, between uh, steaming milk and then going right back into pulling a shot. I will say that the overall process, um, you know, I've made probably five or maybe six coffees just straight back to back in a row um, with everything running really smoothly, no delays, you know, went straight from pulling a shot right into steaming milk again, and then, you know, so on and so forth, five or six times <laughs> on that particular day, having some friends over. Um, this steam one does come with this little guard here um, where you're getting, you know, you can put it to flat or to foam. This is handy for you if, like probably most people, and even people I know that have um, worked in uh, cafes before still feel uncomfortable with steaming milk. Um, this will work quite well to, you know, basically just put your milk jug in there, turn it on and kind of just wait. And there's a, an automatic setting on here that will turn off after I think it's 60 seconds, um, which may be too long, just depending on how much milk you're steaming. Um, personally, I don't love this on almost any machine. Um, I know the, the Breville, uh, a few of the Breville models, maybe perhaps even all of them, don't have this kind of guard. Um, they just have the straight steam wand. Um, in comparison, the Breville steam wand, I would say, has the consistency in terms of it starts off kind of at the same power all the way through, but it's not as strong as what I think you get out of the La Specialista. Um, personally, how I use this, I actually just take this right off. Um, let's see if I can do it here in one go. So that just pops right off and then you're left with the kind of exposed, it's sort of just a rubber um, steam one tip here. Uh, DeLonghi would probably advise against that, um, but I find it's just a lot easier for me to control it. I've, you know, I've steamed thousands of jugs of milk for coffee over the years working in cafes, so I'm very comfortable doing this. Um, if you're not comfortable doing it, then I would just say leave the guard on. Um, but I find that you're able to get, uh, you're able to control more the result you're getting out of this. Now, the power still is not that of a commercial machine, so um, you will get nice foam, but not the type of micro foam that you need to do like really advanced latte art, even like a Rosetta even is quite difficult um, because the microphone is just not sort of compact enough. Um, but you can do some latte art if you're interested in that and, you know, trying to get a tulip or a, a love heart obviously is quite easy with this one. Um, but yeah, this is how I use it. The other kind of annoyance that I have um, is that when you first start the machine, you'll just see here a squirt of water comes out several squirts of water and then it progressively kind of builds that power 
and then here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, and you can just turn it off and it straight away gets ready to do it again, which is nice uh, in terms of pulling several coffees uh, in a row. Um, but that kind of progression and buildup of pressure um, is, I think, what causes the lack of really great microphone in your coffee because it's not sort of instantly giving you that pressure. It's sort of building up to it. And you'll notice that uh, if you decide to go on the manual route here, um, you'll notice that when you're trying to stretch the coffee at the beginning, you just have to wait and make that kind of screechy sound and then start stretching your milk a little bit to incorporate some of that foam and then we can move on from there. So the steam one, look, um, a few things I would probably change, um, that initial kind of squirt of water, which is not uncommon with a lot of even commercial machines anyway, but if they could remove that, that would be great. But, and also the, the um, accessibility of the one, it's quite limited by the very large um, design of the group head here. So you've kind of got this like chrome fixture, I think it's actually plastic anyway, but you've got this fixture that's sort of protruding from the group head, and so it stops it from moving that way. And it, there's just almost no kind of twist to it. There's a lot of rotation here. So I guess if you're steaming off the side, you might be able to get a bit more variable, but it is uh, kind of limiting, and it also doesn't go reach down very far, um, even with the guard on there. So. Look, you're gonna get some decent milk out of this, but um, I would say use it manually if you wanna have a bit more control. So let's talk about the filter. The porta filter is what it is called. And I am a little bit surprised, disappointed, but also understanding of the design of this feature. Now, they've called this machine the La Specialista and kind of pitched it and marketed it as, you know, a way to get a barista style coffee, uh, which I found a very interesting choice of words. Now, if we take a closer look at the uh, filter here, from the outside, it even has these little spouts um, to sort of look like a actual porta filter that you might see in a cafe, for instance, um, with a bit of coffee stain on there. But what's happened, and um, I've kind of appreciate the design that they've they put with this, is this is actually a, uh, a pressure chamber. Um, if you can imagine a um, mocha pot, uh, if you've ever used one of those, the, the stove top mocha pot that builds up pressure and boils out the coffee out of the top. That's kind of like what they're doing with this filter. I wouldn't really call it a porta filter in that sense. I mean, it's sort of sitting in the machine in that way, um, but it's not doing the same job. Let's say if you were to go to a cafe and you see, uh, again, like a Lama Zocco machine uh, and they have the, the, the straight to the basket and the water goes into the basket through the uh, filter basket and straight into your cup. That's not what's happening here. Um, so I wouldn't say it's a true uh, espresso in that sense, um, but the product that gets put out through this um, is consistent. It has kind of a wide sort of range of, of error, if you will. Um, you can put in kind of varying uh, amounts of coffee uh, up to a certain point, different sort of grind sizes of coffee, and you'll sort of always extract something uh, drinkable which is an impressive thing um, in terms of the, uh, the engineering of this, um, but it is kind of tricking you, and, uh, and I'll get into that one a little bit more. <clears throat> so if we look inside the porta filter, we'll see that there's a few different parts. So there's this little filtration um, piece here, and that, goes and sits into the basket, which has just one single little hole in it. And so essentially what happens is when the water goes into this basket, it builds up pressure in this kind of vacuum environment and that's brewing and extracting the coffee. And then that is pushed out into this bottom chamber. Uh, and that bottom chamber even has these grooves to sort of guide the coffee out of the spouts to give you that feel of a you know, full-size commercial style, barista style coffee machine. Um, so are we being tricked with this? Um, 
I would say yes, <laughs> um, but is it giving the product, the intended product? I think also yes. Um, it is giving you an espresso, it's creating um, the crema as well. Even if you have some older coffee, which I've used, you still get a bit of crema on it. So um, it's an interesting design. Uh, I don't love it personally, but um, in terms of be automating the process and especially for your sort of general consumer, general sort of, you know, everyday person that's going to making a coffee probably doesn't have experience on, you know, bigger commercial machines or have that same kind of um, knowledge to implement. I think this is probably a great choice. You know, it's, it's still giving you the feel of like you're making that coffee, pulling those shots, um, but you are being a little bit deceived um, in the sense of this vacuum chamber and how it's getting the coffee out. Now, what I will say that does work really well uh, is the pressure gauge. Um, so as the uh, water is going through the filter, you will see the pressure gauge go up and this is quite a good indication of whether you have too much coffee or the or too finely ground or too coarsely ground um, and where this needle sort of sits in that optimal zone, it is actually quite a good indicator of um, the coffee that is going to be coming out, the espresso that's gonna be coming out. Um, now, going back another step in terms of the grinding, um, I do find that the grind, the stop and start mechanism on here is very quick. Um, haven't had any issues with it. Gives quite an even um, uh, grind into the filter. Um, I will say that the temper, uh, when we pull it down, the, it has a tendency to stick, and I can even feel it now. There's a bit of coffee grounds on there, and it's a bit strange. There's a there seems to be that sort of screw or or something in the middle that kind of always collects the coffee grounds. So I do try to wipe that off each time before going in and making a new coffee. Um, but uh, the tamping works really well. Um, it's you know custom built just for this particular filter. So when you do click it down uh, and you know tamp the coffee grounds, um, it does quite a good job. I will say that if you fill this even just a little bit too much um, or you go too crazy with the tamping, uh, both of those kind of variables have seemed to cause an issue of the, uh, of the group head kind of choking up a bit um, and basically just stalling and you don't get an espresso and you've kind of got to start over. Um, that's happened to me a couple of times, just testing out, trying to get, you know, maybe a different type of recipe. Um, you're, you're quite limited uh, with some of these uh, settings to create, you know, a really customized uh, recipe for a particular coffee. So if you're looking to kind of nerd out, geek out on coffee, um, this is going to be quite limiting on that. Um, but it will give you the consistency, which is quite important in my opinion. So the last few details I would point out for this machine um, are the drip tray. So the drip tray has come out quite easily here. Um, and ready to go wash. You'll even get a little warning here when you do pull anything out. Um, it's got a lot of really sensitive sensors, which is really great um, to know what's happening with the machine. The drip tray though, I find is just a bit excessive. Um, when we look inside, we've got the grate, we've got a secondary piece which sits in the middle, and then you have the drip tray itself. Um, which is just a bit strange to me because they're all going to get dirty with coffee and coffee grounds. Um, and I think they particularly put it in to show the indicator here, this red piece that sort of floats up when you have too much um, liquid, water, milk, whatever you might have in the tray. Um, which I, I get that that could be helpful if you don't clean your machine that often. Um, but honestly, you, you, you know, you'll see the, the coffee grounds, you'll see the, the, the dirt that needs to be washed out. So, I mean, almost every other time I make it, I just clean out the drip tray and just give it a rinse. Um, why that's annoying though, is because there's so many pieces, you've got three different large pieces that you need to rinse off, you know, wash off and then let them dry. And the next time put it all back together. So, um, although it's, you know, a very quality feel to it, I would just say, um, it kind of. Yeah, it's just a bit over overkill in my opinion. Um, the other thing is the cleaning uh, 
program for this machine. So as I mentioned before, you've got some of the coffee grounds here, which are easy to wipe down. You kind of pull the lever and you wipe it down. Uh, and then also the uh, group head, you can easily access that and it has this handy rinse feature as well. So we can just click that and give it a, a good rinse and then a quick sort of wipe down here. And you've got a clean uh, group head again, um, which is really great. So that works pretty easily. Um, obviously the steam wand, I've taken off the guard. You can give it a quick wipe or wash down whatever you need to. Um, but there is a little um, warning that will show up on the machine and it looks like this kind of like a uh, wall with rocks between it. And it will show up red here, which means the machine is in, is in need of a clean. Um, so once you put it on this cleaning function, and uh, DeLonghi has put out uh, a bunch of videos, tutorials on this, um, which are very thorough, it takes a long time. It takes like, I think a, a couple hours even that I left it and I was like really surprised how long it took. Um, but it's giving a really thorough clean, which I do appreciate. You're only gonna do it every great once in a while. Um, I think it must have some sort of sensor on how many um, coffees are come, come through or something like that to indicate when it needs to be clean. Um, and you need like a large container to catch the water. You're going to refill this thing a couple times um, and putting in the, the cleaning uh, tablets as well. So that is a little bit of an annoying process, but again, you only have to do it every once in a while. Um, and it's nice to know that the machine is getting like a really thorough um, kind of clean uh, to go. So the other few settings that are on here, um, you know, you have some of the customizations that you can make. Um, you've got the My setting, um, which basically you can go to any of your coffees, long black, um, espresso, and when you click that button, um, they'll start flashing and then the extraction will go and then you can sort of manually program it that way um, to, to sort of get your espresso out there. So that is quite handy to have. Um, there is another um, feature on this knob here to manually um, just tamp um, and without using the automated grind settings. So our beans are refilled. I will go for a properly tamped espresso and see what happens. So we're looking at very similar, if not exact, same amount of coffee. And we will put it in for tamping, as the machine is yelling at me to do. I like to just give it two good temps. You really don't need any more than that. Um, there's a little bit left on the lip. I find, as I mentioned before, some of it does get stuck. Uh, as you can see on my finger here, some of it does get stuck there, but give it a rinse again, just to keep things warm. And then we'll pull a shot. So as you can see, I've removed the um, metal nozzle guard here that lets you sort of automate the steaming. Um, I know that in future models, they've changed the steam wand, which I think is a great step in the right direction. Um, but we'll go ahead and turn this on with what we've got, this sort of single nozzle rubber little hose. And uh, I've got my jug here. Shout out to Barista Hustle. Great, fantastic jugs. And I kind of overfill my milk a little bit um, with this machine just because it makes things a bit easier than trying to stretch out a, a small amount of milk. Um, I'm not really gonna do a milk tutorial here, but if you would like to see that, let me know in the comments um, <clears throat> and we can get to that later. But I'm just gonna start stretching. So it does first let out a little spurt of water, which you'll kind of see with those bubbles there. And then it slowly starts to speed up our steaming here. Because the pressure starts to build and works up to a decent amount, 
um, I just keep stretching for quite some time compared to, let's say, a more powerful machine. Um, and then you'll see the milk, the bubbles start incorporating and building that nice microfilm. So we're kind of getting to the point where I can just let it spin. Um, this is obviously much quicker on a commercial machine or a more powerful steam one. Um, but we'll kind of just let it spin here until it gets the temperature. You'll see some of those bigger bubbles start to disappear and that kind of pink-like texture that we're looking for. So it's starting to get to that temperature I can just barely keep my hand on, which is what I'm looking for. Give it a little bit more. And then we're good. And then we will give this a clean. I also like to purge the steam one after as well. So you'll see that there's a bit of milk that will come out of that. Um, give our espresso a little stir. There we go. I might get a little tulip out of it. Um, and that's something. That's actually not bad for what I've been getting out of this machine. But you can even see uh, in the texture of the milk, it is still quite thick microfoam. Um, compared to like a finer foam that you would get from a more powerful machine. Um, so look, you know, enough to probably impress your friends or something if you want to do that. Um, but if you did have something more powerful or, or uh, uh, even I think some of the Breville machines do have uh, that better nozzle or the newer DeLonghi machines do have that better nozzle um, and you'll probably get a nicer microfoam. But cheers, enjoy the beverage.